Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft as a senior software engineer. In this demo, we are going to create and deploy Cloud REST based API with Azure App Services and Azure SQL. In this process, we are going to use Visual Studio for creation of project and also we are going to deploy this REST based API using Visual Studio to Azure App Services. And we are going to leverage entity framework to connect to database and do the operations. In this process, we are going to expose HTTP post, get, put and delete, which is create, read, update, delete on a movie model, which we will create as a table inside database. So let's start. For this, I am in Visual Studio. Let me create a new project. And I'm going to select ASP.NET Core Web API template. I'm going to put a name. Then I can click the next. We can select the .NET framework version, which is .NET 8.0 now. Right now we are not adding any authentication and authorization. It will be open for all. We are going to enable open API support, which will give us a nice UI, Swagger UI, so that we can try and test our API. This is only recommended for development environment. For production, we should be disabling this one. And I am going to use controller way to coding, not that minimal API version. Now I click to create. So it is going to create this project for me. Now if we see it has created a weather forecast sample model and also it has created a weather forecast model uh, which have something but let me delete that one one by one. I will delete this weather forecast and also I will delete this controller. Now I will go ahead and first create a folder which where we will create our models. I'm going to create a new class, which will be movie. Now I can put some properties over there and a few properties which can be as ID and title, genre and uh, director, what is the release date, what is the rating. We can have other properties also, but we are not doing right now. We are just using the basic models. Once our model is ready, I'm going to install a package which will be for entity framework. And this is Microsoft.entity framework core. Now you can see that this check marks where we can see that entity framework code has been installed. I am creating another folder where we will keep other classes. Let me create one other class for our context. And I can see that context which will be inherited from DB context. And the dbcon for this one, we have to inherit from using Microsoft Entity Code, which we have just installed. Now let's write a constructor where we can have DB context options. And we going to do this DB context options. So uh, this we are taking this db context input and passing is to main class which, which is coming from entity code, right? Additionally, now we can add our models with this one. So we can say public db set and we can say that which entity. So we are going with model movie entity and we can say that then movies, right? We can say get set for movies. 
once we are done with movie db context we need to go to program.ch to inject new context before that i am going to install one more package and which will be um, entity code.sql server Okay, let's go now here and let's say that builder.services.addb context and our db context is movie db context. Then we have to provide options. So I'm going to put these options. So, and this is our connection string. Uh, for that once we are done with setting the context before generation of and creation of control i will go to azure portal where i have a sql server and sql database already so let's go to sql databases and i'm going to connect and create a table so let's go so i'm here and I'm using right now SQL connection string, which should not be used inside production environment and other things, but I'm doing for a demo purpose. Right now, if we see there is a person table, but I'm going to create a movie table. So I'm going to create a movie table with ID will be int, which will be primary key and identity, which will be automatically generated to plus plus one title, generate, director, release it. Similar to what we did inside our movie model right this is what we have done so let me create this and now we refresh this page let's refresh this table has two now if we go and select anything right now there is nothing so now we can go and grab our connection string and we always should be using that AAD kind of things and a managed identity. But for this demo, I'm going to select this and I'm going to put inside our app setting. In app setting, we can go and put into connection string and let's put as a default connection string. Let me see if I'm putting the correct name which I have injected here. So I'm going to connection strings and then the simple default connection and this is what we have uh, so and we can change our password which we have it here right once we are done with our settings and updating the password in settings then we can go to controller and then we can try to add controller so in controller view we can scaffold for api and i'm going to use api controller with actions now let's add in now this we are going to select whatever model we have whatever db context which we have and it will be picked rest of the thing so let me and it will generate movie controller so let me click on it so now if we see this code has been generated once this class we can go that get movie is the, our get api api slash movie and then this is get movie by id and this is where put movie will happen and this is post movie right and then delete movie so all this is there we can go one by there is nothing much to code entity framework provides right now if we added movie class into movie context right this is movie and it is going to generate all the list whatever it is going to connect it is going to connect to azure sql it is bringing and it is just a converting into movie and then it is putting into list and returning similar way it provides all the features and function for that and that's how entity framework makes it easy to interact with databases for CRUD operations right so this is what it is right now input movie or if you see that put movie it validates that whatever movie id and other things and then it changes all these things then post movie it just uh, takes this movie and uh, adds into context and then uh, returns so in delete if we see it is taking the id and finding that and then it is re removing from that set db set and it is saving the changes
let me go to program.cs and see that yeah it is environment is development then it is swagger is enabled and we can see that if sp.net version and environment is set for development or not let me go ahead and see that can go to debug section we can go to this profile you can sp.net core environment is development so swagger ui should be coming up so i think we are done let's build that and let's run this now we can see this nice uh, ui provided by swagger where we can use this ui to test our api so if i hit right now this uh, So this is one of the setting we have to change for this error inside. Let's go and change that. For that, uh, let me browse my directory. It will be easy. And I can go into CS project. I can open with Visual Studio code. And I can remove this line of code. So this line of code is causing that. And if you see, this is that globalization true with same error we got, right? So I'm going to save this. Once I will be back to our settings, let me rebuild this. Project. Let me run now. Once we go and execute this, we see there is nothing. It is 200, but successful, right? Now let's post one API. So if I will put the debug point, let me put the debug point also in test. Right? It should be hitting this method. So let me, it came here and it returns. So there is nothing. Let me put on that in the post one, post movie. And let me create one movie, right? I'm going to post it and I'm going to say that And release date is whatever we want to put. Let's put n rating equals to 5, right? It comes, if we go inside these details, we can see whatever we have given. It is adding and it is going to say that hey, Mobi ID has created, right? So we can see that Mobi ID is 1 now. And if we go into our database now, let's go into database. And if we go and select query, we can see one records, right? Now, if we wanted to update this one, and now let's suppose we wanted to get all one more time, right? Let's get all. So it is saying that when this is the cost problem to system to decimal to double, uh, because we have seen that one. So let's fix that and into our model inside of, let's see that decimal. And more time I will go and hit this guy to execute. Pop up here, let me remove this. And we can see there is one movie is coming in the list. Right, let's one add one more movie. Right, and let's put the date somewhere 2024 itself so that we can test. Now it created and given the ID number two. Let's go and see here. We have different, right? Now, if we execute one more time this one, so it is now giving two result. Same way, now if we wanted to get movie by ID, I can go and try to execute two, and it is going to give me the second one. Now let's try to update, right? I'm going to trying to update number two, and let me copy this guy where I got that, right? And I'm going to put some rating over there. I'm going to put rating five. And if you see our database rating is zero for this two, right? So I wanted to update this. And it says 200, right? Success. 
say. So let's see that. It updated with five, right? Let's see from our get list. And here we also got five. Now, if suppose we wanted to delete any API, so we can go and try that delete part and it returns success. We can go and see that delete has happened, right? And this is what a basic CRUD API, REST based API, which we have right now. And if we wanted to deploy this into our portal, right? Let me go. And in previous app service demo, we created a API app, which is REST based API demo. And if we browse right now that API app, right? It's just a basic page. We have not deployed anything over there. So I'm going to download this published profile and how to create this API app. You can refer the previous video. And right now I'm going to deploy from Visual Studio, but better to have a deployment from Azure DevOps or whatever DevOps tool we are using. So I'm going to publish this, right? I'm going to import profile, which I downloaded right now. My profile has been imported. So now I'm going to click on publish. Once our API has been deployed, we can go back to our portal. It is restarting the web app. I just wanted to check that configuration section. And right now there is no configuration section for connection string and other things. So we have to add that one because we are using one connection string, right? So let me go ahead and add a new configuration setting. We should not be using uh, connection string and password here. Instead, we should must be putting into our key vault and getting that key vault or application setting, which is that way mostly. So I'm putting right now here and I'm going to anyway update my password after this demo. One more thing I wanted to put over there because we are using our ASP.NET development environment for getting that Swagger UI. So I will add that one also. I will say that this is development. Let me save. Let me go in and restart. Now let's browse this. Now let's see that Swagger point. We can see Swagger is coming. Because there is no authentication authorization, we can try from here. And we can see one record is coming. Now we can go and add more records over there. We wanted to add and action. And I can execute. This will go and save. Give me ID number three. I can go and try to see with. I can go and try to see with ID number three. I can see all the details. I can go back and I can see from this place also. I is coming. And I can go and try to update three with dating three. It is updated. I can go and confirm and then I can go and try to delete this one more time to test. Yeah, this is working. So this is what I wanted to show in this video, how easily we can create a REST based API to insert, delete, update it records inside Azure SQL using entity framework. In next video, I will create how to do similar steps with Azure Cosmos DB because this is relational DB and Azure Cosmos is NoSQL DB. So we will see how we can do with Cosmos DB. Thank you.